We begin with a measure of happiness called utility in economics, and we will see how it diminishes as consumption increases. We move to how preferences are represented when given the choice between bundles of two goods. Finally, we discuss how the willingness to substitute one item for another can depend on how much of that one item is initially being consumed. In microeconomics, there is a topic that is normally called consumer theory. This theory assumes, rather reasonably, that people want to maximize their happiness. The trouble, of course, is that happiness is difficult, if not impossible, to measure. It is also very subjective. Nonetheless, economics defines a term called utility that measures the level of happiness or satisfaction that you get when you consume a good. Utility is measured in arbitrary units called utils. For example, maybe you get 100 utils from eating an apple. The number 100 itself in this example isn't important. Maybe it's 60. But the point is, the higher the utility value, the higher the happiness or satisfaction. Now suppose you eat your first apple and it gives you 100 utils. Then you eat a second apple, and your total amount of utility is now perhaps 120 utils. In other words, as expected, you are happier after eating two apples than one. The increase in the total utility of 20 is what is known as the marginal utility of eating the second apple. Now suppose you eat your third apple. It's quite likely that the third apple doesn't increase the happiness or satisfaction as much as the first or second apples did. Maybe the total utility increases to 135, so that the additional utility the marginal utility derived from the third apple is only 15. What happens when you eat the fourth apple? Well, you could be getting sick of apples, literally. Still, maybe these are small apples and you love apples so that the total utility still increases, but by an even lesser amount. Notice how the marginal utility is getting smaller and smaller as you eat more apples. In other words, in plain English, this means that the amount of happiness or satisfaction or, let's say, utility you get begins to diminish as you consume more and more of the good, which in this case are apples. This pattern is representative of human nature and is called the law of diminishing marginal utility. Now, instead of just apples, suppose you have the choice of eating pears as well. How can we show your preferences when considering a combination of apples and pears, called bundles? Let's see how this would visually look. In this diagram, we have the number of apples on the horizontal axis and the number of pears on the vertical axis. Suppose you have the choice of consuming one apple and three pears, called bundle A. You also have another choice, or bundle B, where you can have two apples and one pear. These two bundles are shown in the diagram. Assuming these two bundles provide you with the same level of utility, then the line that joins these two points together is called the indifference curve. Note, we use the word curve very loosely here, where even a straight line is called a curve. Although only two bundles are shown on the indifference curve in this diagram, note that any combinations of apples and pears on the indifference curve would have the same utility as bundles A and B. We have discussed how indifference curves represent a set of preferences of the same level of utility when choosing between a combination of two goods. Indifference curves have certain features that are worth mentioning. Here are three indifference curves. Indifference curves 3 represents a level of utility that is higher than indifference curve 2, which represents a level of utility higher than indifference curve 1. Therefore, the higher utility is represented by indifference curves further away from the origin of the graph, and vice versa. Another feature of indifference curves is that they cannot intersect. To illustrate this point, consider the problems that arise in these indifference curves. Indifference curve 2 represents higher utility than indifference curve 1, since it is further away from the origin. Now, let's look at bundles B and C that are on indifference curves 1 and 2 respectively. 
They both have the same amount of apples, but bundle B has more pears than bundle C. So logically, we would expect bundle B to have higher utility than bundle C. However, bundle B is on the lower indifference curve 1. This is contradictory. Bundle A at the intersection point is also problematic. This bundle represents the same utility level as bundle B and C, but that's not possible if B and C represent different utilities. Therefore, indifference curves cannot intersect. A third feature of indifference curves is the slope. Consider we begin at bundle A in this diagram. How can we have more apples and yet maintain the same level of utility so that we remain on the same indifference curve? Obviously, we would have to give up some pairs. Otherwise, the utility would actually increase just by having more apples. As an example, we might end up at a bundle like B. Therefore, indifference curves have negative slope. Let's consider the following six bundles of apples and pears, and let's assume they all represent the same level of utility. Here's the diagram. We begin at bundle A with one apple and 20 pears. Now, if we were to instead have two apples, how many pears do we need to give up? In this example, we would need to give up six pears to get to bundle B. Similarly, if we were to have another apple, we would need to give up four pears and so on. You can see that each additional apple requires giving up fewer pairs. At bundle A, we have a lot of pairs and only one apple. We would be willing to give up a lot of pairs in order to obtain apples that we don't have much of. Eventually, as we increase the apple count, we get less utility out of it and begin to miss pairs. So we are willing to give up less pairs as we consume more apples. The marginal rate of substitution, or MRS, is the number of pairs we are willing to give up for one additional apple. It is represented by the slope of the indifference curve. At low levels of apples, the slope is steep, and therefore the MRS is high. As apples increase, the slope gets flatter, which means the MRS is lower. Here's a one-page summary of what was covered in this video. The next video looks at the different types of indifference curves or preferences commonly studied in microeconomics.